Troy, we're most of the way through the first day on uh, the opening of Exponential 2021. For a while there, we weren't quite sure we were going to pull this off, but we're, we're glad to see everybody here in the flesh. And more important, doing business. Good stuff. We are also trying to introduce ourselves to vehicles and companies we haven't worked with before. I wonder if you can give me an introduction to what you're doing with this vehicle. Sure. Well, my name is Troy Messler, and I'm the CEO of Skyfront, and we are a manufacturer of hybrid electric multi-rotor drones that fly for really long periods of time and carry heavy payloads. When you say really long, really long. How, how long is really long? The longest that we've ever flown our drone for is 13 hours. It's the world record for multi-rotor drones. In fact, it's the third longest flying rotorcraft in the world. The first is Boeing, the A160 Hummingbird. It's a full-size helicopter. The second is the Sikorsky, also a full-size helicopter. And the third is Skyfront. What market are you looking at with something like this? Obviously, it's not your typical light lifter at this point because, boy, it looks like it's got some very serious lifting capability. Yeah, so the vehicle, we've adapted it for multi-purposes, applications in both military uh, and defense as well as commercial. So on the military and defense side, we do things like surveillance, uh, signals intelligence, uh, things like that. On the commercial side, we do a lot of LIDAR surveying, infrastructure inspection, and so forth. What we've found surprising is just the number of different ways that people want to use the aircraft. Mm -hmm. So the way we work typically is that a customer will come to us with a particular thing that they want to do, right? And they'll say, hey, we want to do this, X, Y, Z, can you make it happen? And what they'll do is they'll bring the sensor to us, we'll integrate it onto the aircraft, we'll do all the wiring, and we'll basically take our aircraft and specialize it for exactly what they want to do. Describe some of the engineering features of the vehicle, if you have a moment, please. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a hybrid electric drone. It uses uh, gasoline, converts it into electricity in flight. The multi-rotor is a, a really awesome platform, but one of the downsides to it was that it could only fly for 20 minutes previously. So what we wanted to do is basically 10x that flight time, but keep the same great technology. It's an eight-rotor octocopter design. Um, you can lose one propeller, one motor, one ESC, and it will still continue to fly. So for people who are carrying really expensive payloads like LIDARs, cameras, things of that sort, that's really important to them because they don't want the, the, their assets to be lost. They absolutely want to make sure that the drone can continue to fly in case of uh, a failure. We've got a lot of redundancy. Yeah, we have dual redundancies, one in power and the other one in propulsion. We have dual fuel tanks. Fuel tanks are easily removed. You can do a compass calibration super easily. It's fuel injected. That removes a lot of the complication of having to retune the carbureted engine. Like It's already pre-calibrated for you, so you can operate in California, you can go to Colorado on the same day, and you don't have to do a single bit of tuning to get the vehicle to work. It's auto start, so everything just kind of starts up automatically, and this drone operates as though it were a battery-powered drone. The only difference is that you have to refuel it, and then it does create a little bit of noise when you're flying it. Where do you go from here? What we're doing right now, what we're really focused on, is specializing this vehicle for beyond visual line of sight flight. Like that's all we are focused on doing. Mm -hmm. um, we've solved the endurance issue, we've solved the payload issue. Now we're just focused on making sure that this vehicle can operate at range safely and also comply with FAA regulations. And, and so to that end, what we do with things like uh, command and control handoff, mm -hmm. Right, so we can pass off control from one operator to the next over a long distance so that the drone is always in control and people always have data that's coming from the drone, including camera data and telemetry data, and they can take control over it at any point in time. And this helps um, kind of not, not necessarily sidestep FAA regulations, but comply with them um, so that they don't have to apply for beyond visual line of sight waivers or COAs. Troy, we appreciate you spending time with Aero News and uh, Airborne Unmanned. And at some point, uh, we got to see this thing in action. This looks awesome. If it looks good, it usually flies good. The Bristel series of aircraft is proof of that. Furthering their legacy of safety and efficiency, Bristel is proud to feature the Rotax 915 IS Turbo in the current lineup of aircraft. The 915 IS Turbo power plant offers more power than ever before in a light sport aircraft. 
Learn more about Bristel at www.sportflyingusa.com.